just going to run through um, some work I've been doing on um, Kern CVS automated testing. Uh, I'm David Disseldorp and I work in the SUSE Labs file systems team. So um, yeah, the plan is just to go over um, the current state of um, testing or the checks that are run on Kern CVS um, and then look at uh, the goals I have for, for this project. Propose some changes, um, yeah, mostly separate to Kern CVS. So I try to um, leave that mostly as is um, and then run through a, a quick sort of proof of concept demonstration at the end. So um, I think most of you know what um, Kern CVS .susu.de is. Uh, so that's the host that um, provides storage for SUSE's um, kernel uh, repositories. Um, it's been around, I guess, yeah, given the, the host name uh, with CVS, it's been around for a, a long time um, performing this role. Um, we have yeah, quite a, a strict um, process that's followed for um, merging changes into um, branches on the um, kernel source repository there. So we have um, per product or per project um, branches generally. Um, and then we have uh, these user namespaces, which are there for uh, developers to, to submit changes. Um, the product branches then have um, owners, which um, handle merging those changes and reviewing um, changes that go in. Um, and there are quite some um, automated checks already there, um, which are quite helpful. Um, so we have yeah, some uh, checks sort of focused on um, the, the formal process that's used. So making sure that um, yeah, everything's formatted correctly, that we have um, things like the um, upstream uh, commit tags, uh, that it's reviewed by someone within SUSE, um, that it comes in via this um, user namespace. And there are some security checks too. So uh, making sure that it um, uh, doesn't publish any uh, embargo changes, um, some permissions checks. And um, yeah, there's also some um, or, uh, some functionality there to, to make sure that um, the, the patches apply and that um, the kernel builds and also that um, we don't have any unexpected um, kernel ABI changes, which is sort of important for our um, SLE branches, at least there. So the goals for um, yeah, my uh, testing project is, is mostly just to, to complement what's already there. So um, yeah, rather than sort of focusing on um, process, this is more just um, testing the uh, compiled kernels from, from the um, product branches. So my initial focus is um, just the uh, SLE 15 SP4 user for next branches um, so that then uh, testing can be useful for the, the branch owners to sort of um, yeah, consider the stability of the, the changes um, or the quality of the changes that are being proposed for the merge. I'm also focused um, being in the file systems team um, at this stage just on, um, on running um, file systems tests. Um, obviously, this will hopefully change in future. Um, yeah, with the project, so um, I also didn't want to have um, uh, sort of any uh, increased um, workload on, on Kern CVS or um, any added um, security concerns around that. So um, yeah, I chose to sort of run, run everything separate um, to, to the existing Kern CVS infrastructure. And I'm also trying to avoid sort of some of the SUSE specific tools and workflows just so that it can then potentially also be used um, upstream in future. So this is the um, proposed workflow that I have, um, which is, um, yeah, very Git focused. Um, basically, uh, it involves the um, SUSE developer um, continuing to do what's already done, which is uh, submit changes via the um, user namespace um, with for next, um, signing the uh, the commit. So this then uh, sort of avoids, at least um, within my um, uh, test system, I can then um, uh, just validate the uh, kernel source by checking the 
um, signature on the, the commit um, rather than having to trust um, the source that's there. Um, so, so the developer pushes the sign commit to uh, Kern CVS as the head. Um, so uh, they don't need to sign every uh, individual change up to the, the tip, just the tip. Um, and then, um, so this uh, program or system that I've um, been working on uh, basically polls uh, Kern CVS for, for source changes. If it picks up a change, it then checks uh, or tries to validate the um, the signature against the uh, local key ring, which um, ideally will contain all of the um, authorized uh, developers' uh, keys, public keys. It then executes the test job. So as mentioned earlier, just um, XFS tests at this stage, um, captures the results and then um, pushes those results to um, a separate uh, repository. So yeah, obviously um, yeah, it's very Git focused, but um, I still want to avoid using uh, Kern CVS as the host for the repository just for security reasons. So we basically don't need to, or Kern CVS doesn't have to trust um, the ICCI host or um, yeah, accept any changes from that. So those, those changes then go to a separate repository, probably on um, gitlab.susa.de. Uh, and then from the um, developer's viewpoint, um, they can have those repositories as separate remotes within Git and still view the source commits and um, uh, test results side by side with, with Git log. Um, so that's done using um, Git notes, um, yeah, which is, I guess, maybe a little bit of an exotic feature within Git. Um, it's quite useful though, so it allows um, yeah, arbitrary data or metadata to be attached to Git objects without actually changing the, the object itself. Um, so it's sort of just a reference to an existing um, SHA1 uh, commit object. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, so as mentioned earlier, um, the good thing about Git notes is that they can be viewed um, just via Git log um, alongside the, the source changes. Um, so it in integrates quite nicely into existing Git command line workflows and it works across um, remotes quite seamlessly. There are some trade-offs though. So um, yeah, notes are mostly invisible for um, yeah, a lot of the uh, user interfaces like um, uh, yeah, Git, GitHub and GitLab. Um, GitHub at least doesn't pre present them at all um, via the uh, graphical user interface. Uh, GitLab, I think um, they're also invisible. Um, and another drawback is that they're not great for storing binary data. So um, yeah, that needs to be generally encoded um, before it can be stored as a, a, a Git node. So for, for change detection, um, I touched on that earlier. I, I worked on a, um, a separate process. So this ICCI process, which um, handles polling the um, branch of interest or repository and branch of interest. Um, yeah, I mentioned that that, yeah, I, I wanted to stay separate from Kern CVS or not change any of the server side hooks there. So um, it's it's purely a pool based uh, model. Um, the, the advantage of um, polling is, is, is also helpful in that um, we can target um, servers or git repositories outside of our control um, so yeah git.kernel.org would obviously be the primary option there if, if we do choose to test um, uh, stable or, or upstream repositories uh, <coughs> so um, i mentioned earlier that there's also the this um, uh, signature verification process um, which is performed by icci so within this polling mechanism, um, if it if it picks up changes which aren't, or if it picks up a uh, a head which um, isn't uh, or doesn't have a, a signature or can't be verified, then it's just ignored and drops back into the, the polling loop. And um, another cool um, feature of this 
um, this program is that it can run concurrently across um, multiple nodes um, and it just relies on um, Git for the, the synchronization mechanism. So um, yeah, there's this special uh, lock Git note, which is pushed um, when uh, ICCI picks up a, a head for, um, for testing and other processes running concurrently will then see that um, and yeah, not proceed with testing of, of that change. So um, yeah, just relies on Git for synchronization, which is quite helpful. Uh, onto the workload. So <clears throat> at this stage, it's yeah quite simple, um, at least for the proof of concept. It's just um, applying the um, patches within the uh, uh, product or project branch, um, compiling the kernel, and then um, it uh, builds a, a test in at RamFS image, uh, just using uh, Dracket um, and and boots boots that uh, kernel and in a RamFS image runs a test suite, collects everything, and then um, pushes that to the results repository. Um, yeah, there's also the ability to, to access the VMs live. So I'm um, just using the uh, existing QEMU WebSocket interface. Um, it's, it's quite easy to um, yeah, use that to, to access a live system, um, as you'll, you'll see in my demo. Uh, for results, um, yeah, it's not <laughs> not very special at this stage in that it's it's purely capturing uh, the output from the test scripts and stashing those into notes and then um, pushing that off to the uh, results repository. So I've also worked on some um, yeah visualization at least for XFS tests of the J unit XML, but that's not sort of integrated into the the workflow at this stage. Um, I think the hope is that that can be added, um, yeah, on the on the client side um, at some stage soon. <laughs> um, so I mentioned, yeah, pushing to a, a dedicated results repository. Um, plan of using uh, GitLab.suse.de there um, for debugging. Um, I haven't really added any specific functionality at this stage, so. Um, I think it would be helpful, at least so if there's a crash, to, to grab a crash dump. Um, we could also um, stash the inner RAMFS image, which is generally around sort of 30 to 50 megabytes. We could put that as a in Git as well. Um, yeah, QEMU VM snapshot. There are a few few different options there. So next on to the demo. Oops. Hopefully see that um, yeah this is actually using the um, the websocket interface I mentioned um, so I'll assume that you can see my screen there <laughs> um, so here I have um, a um, ICCI process um, we can see the parameters I've given to, to ICCI um, there so I have it um, uh, pointed at a source repository. Um, in this case, it's on my, my laptop. Um, I, I didn't trust the SUSE network to sort of <laughs> um, yeah, have any <laughs> or be outage free during this talk. So I thought I'd just run everything locally. Um, uh, but this would normally then be pointing at um, kerncvs.suse.de. Um, we have the, the source branch. Um, so yeah, just my user namespace, uh, the for next for Sleep 15 SP4. Uh, we have a test script, which um, is, yeah, just short script, which calls um, uh, Rapido, which in turn calls Dracket to create the um, the test in at RamFS image after compiling the kernel. Uh, then we also pointed at the results repo, again, also on my laptop. Um, yeah, I mentioned that would probably be on um, gitlab.suse.de, at least for, for current CVS testing. Um, and then just a few other minor parameters at the end. So we can see that it's it's already been started. So um, normally this would just run under, or as a systemd service, I'm just running it manually because um, it, it's a bit easier to get to the, the logs. Um, so we have it, um, yeah, running it's, it's 
pulled down the head and attempted um, TPG um, verification um, and that failed so it's just transitioned to um, polling for that branch. Excuse me. So um, from there and change to the developer machine. So um, here I have um, uh, yeah, there we go. Actually, make sure everything's up to date there before I get. That looks good. So we can see here, um, let me just bring the screen cursor in. Um, we can see here the um, demo source repository um, for Net, so SLEE 15 for Next is um, sitting at uh, Takashi's commit there, um, which is uh, SLEE 15 SP4, um, or the matches the SLEE 15 SP4 as the product branch. And I have then on top of that, just a couple of um, example changes, um, which I would like to get tested and included in uh, the SLE 15 SP4 branch. So um, at least with Kern CVS, that would then just be a matter of pushing to uh, those um, changes to my Fornext um, branch. So I'll go ahead and do that, obviously just on my local system here. So, um, we just go source um, SP four S just cut and paste that one from my local window. So that should do it. So it's pushed it to the repository, and now it's just a matter of um, ICCI picking up that change uh, and forming verification. So I have it um, polling every 10 seconds. Um, there we can see it's. Um, Oh, it's also got to <laughs> uh, rebuild, at least apply the patches atop this um, Linux base 514 tarball. Um, anyway, while that's running, I'll just sort of run through what it's it's done so far. So um, up here we can see that it's um, performed verification, which has succeeded. It's then um, pushed this uh, lock object, which I mentioned is then sort of the synchronization point for concurrent processes. Uh, that means that this, um, after successfully obtaining the lock, it can proceed also with, with the test. Um, so it then just starts the uh, script to uh, perform compilation. And yeah, while well, that's running, um, I think given that it's <laughs> so it's um, compiling using a, a relatively minimal uh, kernel config so um, yeah it shouldn't take too long but um, obviously we don't want to sit around and just watch it compile so um, I think it makes sense to move on to to the final slide um, yeah so so we'll see what um, oh I guess how the, the end of this um, proof of concept, uh, how things work in terms of how um, the results are presented to um, the developer. But um, from there, um, I'd like to sort of, yeah, consider uh, where this, uh, where we can take this. So um, whether it's considered useful for for 
um, other developers or other teams. Um, I think for me, I'm, I'd be fine with just using it by myself at this stage, but um, obviously um, I want something which is um, yeah, usable for, for others. Um, so at the moment, I've also mostly been um, using Orthos hosts for, for testing, um, which didn't work out so well, at least through through summer in Nuremberg. <laughs> so um, yeah, cobbling together some other hardware would, would be helpful, I think, for this. Um, other test suites, so um, yeah, Rapido, this um, script I have for uh, creating init RAMFS images with Dracket, that already has support for um, block tests, for LTP, um, for NVMe testing, yeah, heaps of file system tests. So um, yeah, getting those running shouldn't be too difficult. Um, it's more just a matter of plumbing it in and um, having some sort of ability to, to pass the test results. So that's, I think the key is is just improving the the reporting mechanism for results, um, and then also um, upstream. So it would be good to um, say have uh, this also running against say one of the the stable branches, um, just so that we can also monitor um, say differences in test results between stable and and the SLE derivatives. Um, Oh, and finally, um, yeah, it may be helpful to run something more heavyweight like um, KDevOps or, or Kernel CI um, instead of just this um, bare bone in at RAMFS um, for testing. I think for me, I just, I prefer the simplicity of using um, Dracket and QEMU rather than pulling in Vagrant and um, yeah, Salt or Ansible and all these sorts of things. So that was sort of why I chose to start at, at this point. But, um, yeah, with that, um, I think we'll go back to the demo. Hopefully this will be done soon, but um, I'll also ask whether anyone has any questions or comments or... Uh, whether anyone's fallen asleep or... <laughs> Doesn't look like. <laughs> But it's very interesting. Thank I guess you. I can just while the compilation completes, um, I'll just quickly show. Uh, where are we? Um, so Rapido, um, I can at least go through the list of. Um, Used to pressing Control W. <laughs> um, this is sort of the list of um, test suites, at least that um, Rapido has the ability of of running. So yeah, there's heaps of coverage for um, file systems tests, um, in RAMFS, the in kernel SCSI target, um, NFS client and server, um, NVMe. So um, it's it's not Nowadays, just SUSE or, um, that works on adding these um, test images. Um, we also have Western Digital um, helping out now. They have sort of um, used this for some of their um, yeah, zone, zone FS stuff. Um, and may I go back and see whether running. <laughs> So hi David. So is it the plan? Your plan is to deploy that individually from KVH. So it doesn't integrate in, in KVH, right? Or that's right, Takashi. So it's it's running on a separate host um, using so using obviously um, uh, the Kern CVS source repository, but um, yeah, running separate to KBuild. Yeah, because it, it means that it takes time doubly for compiling. Yeah, for compilation, it does take time. Um, so I have quite a, a cut down um, kernel config, whereas I think KBuild does the regular SLE kernel config, right? Yeah, that, that has to compile so as if it's um, built 
responsibility for yes. building the package. Yeah. Yeah. yeah right. Yeah, or is... Actually, uh, the eventual aim would be that uh, Cable just makes some sort of RPMs or final packages, and the kernel CI work would pull it from there in order to save on computation time. Uh, but uh, since right now we are building it independently, I believe uh, it makes sense to do this and eventually in try to integrate it through such smaller means. Yeah, I think it's it makes sense. On the other hand, kernel build, K build yeah, is uh, not it's uh, doesn't use official compiler that is used for the package as actual packaging in OBS or IBS. And so it's it is it's using cross compiling and so on. So it's the resultant binary might be a bit different from the, the final results from the in the package itself. So that could be a potential problem if we, we do um CI from the result of the KB KB objects. Mm. Yeah I did actually look at using um uh, the, a local build service uh, VM for doing the compilation and then also um, k execing into the the test suite after that. So um, that certainly does give a much um, yeah more product representative um, test. Uh, so I'd be happy to sort of um, follow follow up with that one if if there are concerns around yeah sort of uh, this baroque. <laughs> Um, system of um, compiling and testing. So. Yeah, and uh, yeah, Peter mentioned in the chat that yeah, I'm I have been yeah running the local CI on my machine, but it's um it's a um, CI that fetch fetch the um, kernel RPM from the IBS, so that it's pulled in each time, yeah, so in, in every hour starting a job to fetch the RPM and if that, that there is something new, then it starts. So it, it does kind of so, um, kernel package update and try to check whether it breaks something or else. So cool. it's very minimalistic. Um, so something like that, David, that's it's running on QM and so But yeah. yeah. Yeah, it sounds helpful. I think so. With this one, I also wanted something which I could use for upstream, which is why I sort of settled on just the Git um, sources. The um, yeah, the the initial feed in for for the um, testing. Uh, Mir uh, Miroslav has mentioned. Yeah, it would be nice to select suitable test suites per changes. Yeah, that's. Um, so that's something which Goldwyn raised. Um, I completely agree. So having um, some ability to sort of evaluate the um, changes and then execute um, a test suite based on um, the coverage for that suite and the corresponding changes that are being tested. Um, uh, I think that's it's certainly um, something I'd love to work towards, but um, it's uh, I think quite a, a complex or complicated um, project which would come after sort of some of the easier low hanging fruit items. And, and can it also run um, the test that's taking, that takes a long time, also less frequently, instead of the of each, um, so the git push, but for example, yeah, once per day or once per week that running the long tasks yeah that would be an option um, so at least with the existing um, framework it would just be a matter of um, running a separate ICCI process with um, yeah different um, test suite as, as the target um, yeah the cool thing is that you can um, change the uh, notes namespace um, for reporting so um, the same source changes can then um, be put in by multiple um, ICCI processes with the results pushed under separate notes namespace namespace and then viewed sort of yeah alongside each other or you can sort of filter on um, the namespace when you do a git log minus minus notes so um, yeah it all it all integrates quite nicely into git it's just sort of 
yeah, presenting it outside of um, Git log is is not so so nice. <laughs> Yeah, the use of the Git notes is nice. Yeah, I I, I love that feature. <laughs> Which it, I didn't use so much, but yeah, it was a nice one. So in general, how how long it takes to so finish the build and tests? So on <laughs> on a machine which isn't my uh, six year old laptop, it's it's actually quite quick. Um, so in this case, uh, the compilation's finished. It's um, just calling Dracket to generate the init RAMFS image. Um, and uh, it's booting the machine now. And yeah, the test suite runs. So I just have it running one individual test from XFS test just as, as a proof of concept. But you can see that that completes within uh, 17 seconds basically from uh, after compilation, um, then running through and yeah, running the, the test. And it's then come through and uh, we can see uh, at the bottom there, it's gone and um, pushed the um, results to the results repository. So now if we switch back to our developer view, um, here we can just do a um, git fetch. Uh, and pulls down the um, notes. Um, yeah, so um, that actually requires a change to the git config just so that um, the ICCI notes are actually fetched um, via git fetch. Um, but from there, we can do git log minus minus notes equals ICCI. And from there, you can see, so there's the, um, the head change. And under that, we have the first note, which is the ICCI locked. Um, so that's the synchronization object I mentioned. Um, we have standard error. Um, which is drag it, lots of drag it output. Um, and further down, there's our kernel compilation. And below that, we have the test results. the XFS test uh, run is done against uh, just some um, ZRAM, so memory-backed block devices within QEMU, but um, it, yeah, it works works quite well and is obviously quite performant um, when it's not running on a, an old laptop. <laughs> and oh yeah, we have just the overview um, note as well, which is just pass-fail um, based on the return status of the script. Um, yeah, that's, that's I guess it. Uh, there's another question there from Enzo. Um, moving our SIFS testing build bot from a custom Go app to buildbot.net. I reckon it looks over-engineered for our case, but how would it compare um, I don't know buildbot.net, um, so I think uh, Aurelion worked on the initial um, SysKO buildbot functionality, um, which actually looked quite quite cool. Um, yeah, it didn't really have the the polling and um, uh, GPG verification functionality that I wanted, so I sort of um, yeah. Took some inspiration from that, but um, decided to go with with my own thing. Um, I've I've not used buildbot.net though. Um, yeah, I generally try to avoid the uh, GitHub GitLab integrated CI utilities just because they sort of make it a bit difficult. I find to get um, the the result data out of of the system or out of the silo. <laughs> yeah. 